morning from Albany. We left our little uh, rest spot, drove it back into town. It's only 12, 13k, so it's not very far. Back into the middle of town and uh, popped up this hill here to a uh, lookout. And there's a uh, little uh, memorial here for wartime. I think it's the uh, mounted um, uh, battalion or whatever they are. We'll go, go have a look. But anyway, I just wanted to point out the, the parking facilities up here. Um, there's plenty of parking for, I think it looks like five vans. And obviously there's car parking around the area there as well. So, uh, pretty good facilities here for that. And the van made it up the hill, okay. <laughs> I was a bit worried about being lookouts. Anyway, we're going to walk around and uh, catch up with Jude. Now, I don't know my military side of things too well, so uh, but this is part of the coastal defence uh, back in 1891, completed in 1892, with a 9-inch breech-loading guns arriving in Albany in March 1893. So I guess this is, oh, what do they call them? Underground magazine. Two chambers, concrete magazines, uh, was built in 1893, designed to store 400 shells and similar number of cartridges. The original storerooms were surrounded by a lamp chamber compromise of lamp enclosure covered with thick glass protected by wire. So we're on the other side of the bay. So uh, the ships we saw yesterday from the whaling uh, center. And then um, I think a little white beach where the, the cleaned up rock is over there. That's Missouri Beach side. And then the little settlement you see in there, that would be the whale center, Albany Whaling Center. We're on the other side of that. But uh, pretty wicked defense system over here. It's a gun down on the corner there. And another gun here this one here. So yeah, there was plenty of defences looking after, I guess, all of what this area here is. Any enemy coming in. Bit of a sombering point there. We're uh, out in the bay here. There's a number of ships all assembled. Take 30,000 and 1914 to war. I've said. And down around the corner here, you're gonna have to excuse the lawnmower. Uh, they've got a, uh, a wee sample of uh, some of the guns and some ship bits and pieces down here, which I see a couple of kids here really enjoying it. So yeah, down in the back here, got heaps of military armory, including this little baby. Well, there's two babies here actually. Surface to air missile. Now one thing, I was not prepared for. This was designed in 1963 and it says here that it's still being used today. And then going from that missile to this one here, this is a anti-submarine missile and that too, that was in service in 1960. 
and was uh, in service until the 1990s. Yeah, really interesting to be up close to some of these babies. Loves digging in those pebbles. Give me something down deep. It's got a beautiful coat on him. He is so busy having a feed. He does not know I'm nearby. Well, just walking back. I'm checking out the, the centre up there and uh, pretty good little facilities. Um, just be prepared, this walk from the caravan park up there was uh, it's a good little uphill slog, not too bad though. Did see a couple of motorhomes up there and some smaller pop top caravans, but uh, let's say there's plenty of parking down here and I need to work off any pies that I had the other day. So I'm going to go and walk up to the horses. I understand uh, it's a bit hard to actually take the motor home and the horses are somewhere about there. So it's about one and a half kilometers. So let's go. Wow, how's this? So the horses that were shipped to war. So the horses were called whalers, served in World War One. Only one made it back home, it was Sandy. Sandy was one of the Major General Sir William Throsby Bridges mounts. The gilding accompanied bridges to Gallipoli, but was not landed. Similarly, only one New Zealand horse that had served in the Middle East was returned home. This was the mare named Bess. So here it is, the memorial for the, the Desert Mounted Corpse Memorial. Tell by my painting. <laughs> been a big climb. We're making it to the top. Australia and New Zealand, 1916, 1918. This is going to be a good one. So the significance of placement of the Desert Mounted Corpse Memorial is that it overlooks the assembly place and point of departure on the 1st of November 1914 and the 31st of December 1914 of the first and second convoys taking Australian and New Zealand soldiers to World War I. Just uh, at the waterfront of Albany here, a nice little fill-up spot down here and uh, let's just move the van over there because there's a, uh, a little attraction here. I can't drive the motor up down this way so there's no caravans. So uh, a little bit. It's called the uh, Amity. It's like a replica of a ship. I find out it's a bit but here we go, just along the foreshore of Albany. It's a replica of the Brig Amity, which arrived on Mendang Ludja to establish the first European settlement in Western Australia. And what do you know? I didn't bring any cash with me. I just did the did the haka. Couldn't find my wallet. <laughs> So I'll have to leave the ship. I'll go and see what I'll see how far Duke's got here. I'll go and grab something. We're on to it. We're on to the granite skywalk. It's at uh, Parongarup. 
excuse me if I said that wrong. And uh, set your timepieces for how long it takes us to get there. It says Castle Rock Trail, it's uh, four kilometres return, allow two hours. It's a difficult walk with long steep sections, many uneven side size steps and unmodified natural surfaces. A good level of fitness is required and considering I've only just started and puffing like nobody's business, I'm in trouble. Uh, this trail is a steep descent through changing forest of yate, Maori and Kauri trees. Uh, discover balancing rock and rewarding views from Kauri Lookout at the end of the trail. Oh, and then you got Granite Skywalk. <laughs> it's class five. It's 130 meters return from Castle Rock Base. Allow 30 minutes. Oh yeah. We're off. Granite Skywalk, 2.2 kilometers. Oh, so you can understand me and I'm not breathing too heavily. What we've done this morning, we decided to stay where we were at a, uh, I think they call it Lower Kings or something like that, just down there at the, uh, uh, just out of uh, Albany. It's a good little spot there. And um, made an early start. It's about a 35 minute, 40 minute drive to the uh, Granite Skywalk car park. Easy access, paid our fee, and uh, making a nice early start to it. And I think it was last time I looked at my watch, it was around about oh, seven, seven o'clock. So we're on our way. Oh well, as you can probably notice, the vegetation's got thinner, sun shining through. That could only mean one thing: we're getting closer. Ooh. The sun is coming through. Jude's doing pretty well. It's a good slog. These uh, beautifully uh, prepared steps. So uh, hats off to your uh, track maintenance. They've done all this, it's good. Wow, you're slightly taller than <laughs> the tree. The granddaddy. Yeah, hate to think how many rings are there. Do you want to start counting? <laughs> Not. Bit more split, please. <laughs> Come on, split those legs. <laughs> you, you want to see? Pass me the camera when you're done. I'll show you where it's crashed down through the bush here. Here we go. I'm standing on the trunk. Well, do you call it the trunk? The root system. That's where we just walk through and that gap. But man, it has just waved the path through the bush. That must have come down with a crash, eh? It must have been loud. You would have heard that. Yep, I did. You did hear it? <laughs> Were you here ah. back then? <laughs> oh, you did that so fast, I never got the camera out in time. Oh, you're doing well. Well done. Here comes the fun part. Holy Toledo. Massive. Oh, we don't need to go to the top. That's it. I know I'm going to have to leave my hat down here. Nah, definitely not. But it's worth the view. <laughs>
Oh, holy macaroni. What a day. I'm going to have to take my head off. You used to see me last time with my head off. Oh, where do I start? Excuse the bashing around. It's um, some plastic flapping around there. Um, today, we got up from that uh, little RV park or the rest area just outside Albany. And uh, we had a mission. Get up early. Let's go and do the granite skywalk. Wow. Everything was great. We did the granite sky walk, we, we got there, um, paid for our admission into the place and uh, kitted it all up and we started walking. Unbelievably, there was only um, really one car there, there was a van there as well. As we started heading up, a couple for the car came out, they took off, never saw the person that was in the van. We were it. We were the first well, we were the only people onto the granite skywalk. I think we got up there, it was just shy of about eight o'clock, and the wind started to get up. So as we were um, climbing up the ladder, um, a gentleman below us was sort of coming by and he said, well, I'll, I'll take a, a, a track around the bottom. You guys take all the time you want to go up, which is really nice of him. Aaron was his name. So we went up the top, got up there, took a few photos and, um, all of a sudden, Jude said, look, somebody's flying a drone. And of course, I took my drone and I was starting to think it was getting a little bit too windy, but I noticed he had the same drone as me and he was doing pretty well with it. So I thought, okay, I'll throw my drone out. Well, <laughs> popped it out there, got a little bit of video, took a photo, right, time to get it on back in. It wouldn't come towards me. So I'm kind of like, no! Am I pointing in the wrong direction? Because I'm going forward, come towards me, and it seems to be going backwards for the bus, and then it was coming towards me. So anyway, thank heavens there was a couple there. Um, this bloke, if you're watching, thank you so much. I, I gave up because I've never been in this situation. And I said, can you see what you can do? So he got on to the, to the controls. He said, mate, I, you, you're fighting it. We could go down to the trees and skim the tree line and maybe get back and things. Meanwhile, the battery obviously was starting to go. I was in sports mode. So he said, the best thing I can do is just, we'll send it. Boom. <laughs> so he turned it around and sent it. And I went out towards the bloody farm and, and he did a great job. Top, top effort bloke. Anyway, um, we go going, oh, damn it, we've lost it. We've got to go and try and find it. The bloke that was down the bottom started coming up. He was laughing. He said, oh, guess what? I've just got lost my drone. <laughs> Unbelievable. So anyway, we teamed up, we hooned it back down the old hill again and uh, got into two vehicles. We were in the van and he was in his van and we followed each other. And we reckoned the pings coming from our um, drones were in similar locations. So yeah, we, we, we made it to the farm and uh, he said, jump in the, he jumped in our van and we went down the road. We said, well, he said, because you've got battery, we'll concentrate on your one first. He found it. The bloke that took over the controls did an amazing job. He got it down beside a road and landed it. And all I saw was a water tank and a post. And boom, there it was. And it was kind of just about a meter off the corner of the road. So somebody could have run over it, but there it was. So Eureka, we did well. So then it was like, let's focus on Aaron's one now. And Aaron's was a little bit more difficult because his was flat as a pancake. Anyway, yeah, we, we uh, had a, a screenshot of where he was and covered the area. It took us about 10 minutes and we found it. So, dude's got the photos, hanging on to our drones. And um, yeah, the, the, I've just got the early model uh, DJI Mavic and uh, it's not good in wind. I knew it was, it keeps on protesting every time I fly it and anything that is more than a fart and um, it goes, yeah, can't fly, can't fly, but I get it back, but this one here was definitely a challenge. So when I'm going to go to Bunda Cliffs, guess what? I'm not going to fly a drone anywhere over those damn cliffs. <laughs> but it was fun. never look down a barrel. Hey, if you never look down a barrel, it could be dangerous.
Kim was going. Yeah, Kristen, Kristen.